Let's start off with some explanations. Who is Vanny? Vanny is the apparent primary antagonist of the next FNAF game Security Breach, which at the time of filming doesn't have a release date. Vanny, also known as the Reluctant Follower, was grabbed a hold of by Glitch Trap in some form and has now two consciousnesses in her head. Hers that Googles the migration pattern of bees, and Williams that Googles how far can a human be tortured before passing out and how to induce compliance in human subjects, as we learned from FNAF AR emails, which seems to indicate that Vanny isn't entirely under his control. However, we don't know where she came from, only that she's most likely both Vanny and the security guard Vanessa. We also know that Vanny, when William is making her speak, has glitchy vocal cords somehow, and will fumble words like we see in the Security Breach trailers, particularly when she says it was only a glitch. So it's safe to say that when she is killing, or at least being aggressive or violent, she isn't in control of her body and rather it's William. This is the second closest we actually get to interacting with William directly, since the closest we got was FNAF 3, since, you know, he was alive inside Springtrap, but now he's alive inside Fanny. Alive. We had a whole separate video on how he's not technically alive. Go check that out. Now, this all seems well and good, but how would we be Vanny? After all, there is no evidence to suggest it, right? Well, not necessarily. Technically, if you want to use that argument, we also have no evidence that we aren't Vanny. At first, I thought we were Gabriel, someone who shares a name with the child who goes on to possess Freddy, much like the Jeremy we hear about from Tape Girl. But now I am absolutely certain that we play as a woman named Vanessa who takes over playtesting after Tape Girl's company sends the game to another company, as we hear Tape Girl describe in her recordings. This must be the company that we work for just because it makes sense. As to who we are, that's where the theory comes in. There isn't much to go on in the main game since, well, most of it revolves around finding Glitch Trap, but at the end, when we successfully find all 16 tapes, we do end up merging with Glitch Trap, which does line up with what we think happened to Vanessa, so there's one point right there. There's also all the circumstantial evidence that supports this hypothesis. Like Vanessa, as we know her, being a security guard, just like we play as in the VR game most of the time. The similarities between her story and the story we know about our character, the knowledge that we are not Tape Girl and neither is Vanny since she's working at a company handling the FNAF AR animatronics, etc. Where we can really find evidence to support this and what made me solidly believe this theory is in the mobile port of FNAF AR, of all places. Because due to size constraints we were reduced to some of the mini games from VR with the addition of a secret one, only accessible via clicking or interacting with objects with glitching textures, but clearly intentional glitch Tapping on these a lot and zooming in will eventually cause you to be brought back to the main home screen and a monitor next to the main system will have a secret mini game called Princess Quest. I talked about this in a recent video, however I wanted to go more in depth here. Princess Quest is a special mini game from Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted exclusive to mobile ports. The mini game can be accessed from the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience main hub room and occasionally a grid pattern will appear on objects at the prize counter. To unlock Princess Quest, the player must zoom in on one of these glitching objects. Afterwards, the screen will fade to black and fade back in to the level select with everything unlocked along with Princess Quest shown on the right monitor, the little tiny one. The player starts out in a room with a door that they cannot open, and they have to light all four torches in the next room to make the actual door open in the first room. This is just to show you how to play the game, basically. The player will then end up in a room full of floating glitch trap heads that will attack them. After lighting the torches in that room, you can now go into the next room and get the key. And glitch trap blockers will block the door and attack the player if they get too close. Wonderful. This game basically serves as a way to get glitch trap into the game because you know they couldn't have him because it's a freaking mobile port. And throughout the entire minigame, only 16 torches are found that can be lit up. And this is possibly, but most definitely a metaphor to the 16 tapes found in the original version of Hell Wanted, showing how we as the player collected the tapes and then inadvertently summoned Glitch Trap in his physical form. And then, you know, he kind of melted our brains. If this is indeed the case, then that single minigame serves as an overview for the entirety of FNAF VR. Since after lighting the 16th, well, the games call them torches, but they're really braziers, but after lighting the 16th one, a glitch trap sprite will appear, saying his signature line of I always come back in coded text at the bottom, as well as saying I always come back, let me out, if you take the sound that plays during that scene, double the speed, and reverse it, which just serves as confirmation that glitch trap is actually the 
this character and just not some ripoff thrown in for fan service. But this is where the theory really comes through. If this Princess Quest minigame serves as an overview for all of FNAF ER, then that's confirmation right there that our player character in FNAF VR is female, since that's who we play as in this game, going around lighting torches or collecting cassette tapes and eventually accidentally reassembling glitch trap. With our character being female, and obviously not tape girl, we don't have many options left. We must be Vanny. However, this brings me to my next point. What if Glitchtrap is possessing multiple people, and not just us? Couldn't Vanny just be somewhere else and we're another unlucky victim? Well, this could be true, but I don't think it is. I don't think Glitchtrap can possess multiple people at once, and I think that Help Wanted has been telling us this from the get-go, and we never noticed. After the final showdown, if you successfully follow Tape Girl's instructions, you lock yourself in your own mind. The Glitchtrap manifestation that appears turns into a green rabbit plush that spawns on the ground where he used to stand. This single moment indicates to us that we are now actually possessed. If we don't follow the instructions though, we end up merging with him on stage. But that's just simply in the game. That isn't in the real world. Yet if you're focused on trying to do the complicated process properly to actually fend him off, fend him off, your mind is vulnerable. You aren't fighting off glitch trap and instead you're trying to press things in the right order, which basically gives glitch trap an access tunnel into your psyche, thus being able to shut you away. Obviously this doesn't work forever, since Vanny seems to have no recollection of what Glitch Trap does, but nonetheless the answer was right in front of us the whole time. Once Glitch Trap actually gets into our mind, we can see that he can no longer manifest in the game and is replaced by something so that the game doesn't break, cause you know, code. Glitch Trap cannot be in two places at once, therefore he cannot possess multiple people at once, meaning that the one he does possess, who ends up being us at the end of Help Wanted, must be Vanny, just based on, like, just by default. There, there's nobody else that it could be. It's literally impossible. It's just how, it is what it is. That's the way the news goes. Number 10, Vanessa. Okay, so one of the biggest theories that we have to talk about first, because it plays into other theories that I'm gonna talk about, really involves Vanessa. Vanessa is the security guard that we see in Security Breach thus far. I mean, we haven't gotten the game yet, but in all the material about it. And who we also potentially get to play as for part of the game, or interact with if we're playing as Gregory. We've seemingly learned some things about Vanessa and where she came from through emails found in the AR mobile game, Special Delivery. If we're right in connecting Vanessa to those emails, it also seems like she is two different personalities warring within herself, and many believe that one of them happens to be Vanny. Vanny is perhaps Vanessa's darker side, and we will learn through playing the game and encountering both Vanessa and Vanny that they are actually one in the same. Number 9, Disassociative Identity Disorder. Disassociative Identity Disorder, formerly known as Multiple Personality Disorder, usually is caused by severe trauma, and is often described as as being a very complex disorder where you experience a disconnect between thoughts, feelings, and even actions. In the case of Vanny, this is likely what she suffers from to a degree. We don't know what has caused her DID, but we do know that it seems to have turned her into an accomplice of Williams. Is it possible that he shared with her information on the killings and in so doing traumatized her to the point that she became a reluctant and later loyal follower of his, completely cut off from her own actions? Was that the trauma that created a split personality? Or did she have the split personality before? Hmm. And friends, before we move on to our next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists about more awesome security breach things that are coming, like Vanny, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Similar But Separate. Speaking of people thinking that Vanny is Vanessa and maybe a split persona of hers, it's also possible that the opposite is true. What if Vanny isn't Vanessa and they're actually separate people? What if the nest that we read about in those special delivery emails is Vanny but isn't Vanessa? After all, some of the physical descriptions don't quite match up with, with what we've seen. Is it possible that there could be two Vanessas out there who are separate people? Is that too much of a coincidence? Could they be clones or perhaps identical twins with the same name? Most evidence has led us to believe that they are the same person, but it still hasn't been explicitly confirmed as fact yet. And it's possible all the breadcrumbs that we've been left with are actually perhaps a misdirect. After all, if we figured out the entire plot and story of the game and its characters before it released, would it be as fun to play? It makes more sense that the information we were given to make us think we know what's going on could actually just as easily be twisted in some way and used to surprise us. Do we even know if Security Breach takes place at the same time throughout? Is it possible that we could be seeing 
back in time to the 80s as well as forward to the current modern day era. What do you think? In that case, perhaps Vanessa or Vanny is actually a descendant of the other. Number 7, Mrs. Afton. This theory, the more it gets explored, seems to have less and less legs to stand on. Every time I come back to it, I'm like, it makes a little less sense. I would be surprised if there was even one leg left for this theory to hop around on at this point. And yet people are still holding out hope that Vanny could be Vanny Afton or Vanessa Afton and end up being somehow the love interest of William Afton and possibly mother of his children. This is a list of theories based on Vanny and because they are just theories, it doesn't mean that they're all sound. So just to say that. The reason why a lot of people feel like this theory just doesn't make sense at this point is because people also theorize that Vanny is Vanessa, who we also see in Security Breach. There has been tons of evidence to support this, but if this does happen to be true, it really diminishes the likelihood of this theory being true that Vanny or Vanessa is Mrs. Afton. Just based on what we've been led to believe Vanessa's age is via emails found in special delivery. That is of course if you assume that Ness from the special delivery emails is Vanessa and then that Va Vanessa is Vanny. So there's a lot of a lot of layers. But a lot of people are connecting those dots and then being like that's what it is. Or sorry, you're looking at this backwards check mark. There we go. <laughs> Number six, a new Afton sibling has entered the chat. Another theory when it comes to who exactly Vanny is, is that she could be of the right age to be another child of William Afton's instead of being his wife or his lover. Of course, that is once again assuming that Vanny and Vanessa are one in the same, and the clues we have towards Vanessa's age also apply to Vanny. Some think that Vanny slash Vanessa is choosing to help William Afton because she's been raised to be his accomplice. Hmm. Being the daughter of William Afton would help us to make more sense of her motivation that she might have for helping him. Number 5, Elizabeth. Another really wild theory is that Vanny isn't a new daughter of William Afton, but is actually Elizabeth, an old daughter of William Afton's, who somehow survived being killed by Circus Baby, I suppose. Of course, considering that we've been led to believe that it was Elizabeth who possessed Circus Baby in the first place, being dead and then had her spirit freed later on at the end of Pizzeria Simulator in part by Mastermind Henry, this doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> How could she have survived? Well, that's where this theory really falls flat because we don't really have a good and plausible explanation for that yet anyways. The only thing that really would make sense to me is if we'd misunderstood the clues that have helped us come to the conclusions about that lore. Like if Elizabeth actually maybe was never killed and it was a different potentially nameless victim who in reality possessed Circus Baby and gave her sentience and we were just led to believe it was Elizabeth but really it wasn't. Granted then that likely meant that both the fans and Michael were completely misled, either intentionally or as some kind of plot twist which was going to be revealed soon. Or of course unintentionally through miscommunication of the plot and lore. So we were never meant to think that, but that seems less likely to me. So I think if it is a misdirect, it's probably intentional. Number 4, Gregory. Many people have speculated that Vanny will be the antagonist of the game Security Breach. Possibly a split persona of Vanessa who is trying instead to help Gregory. Whereas Vanny wants to catch up and possibly sacrifice him. Conflict Ding desires. While some think we'll be playing as Vanessa at least partly, others think that Gregory will actually be the protagonist who has to run and hide and try to escape the clutches of Vanny and Glitch Trap. Perhaps Gregory is then the protagonist we play as, trying to survive, and Vanny is the main antagonist and villain that we are forced to face, sneak past, and eventually perhaps fight against. Number 3, Protagonist. On the other hand, what if Vanny is the protagonist and antagonist of the game? Hear me out. What if we play not necessarily as Gregory or even really Vanessa, though still kind of Vanessa if she and Vanny are one and the same person, as we fight to free ourselves from Williams slash Glitch Trap's influence. Huh? That would make for a very interesting game, I think. Perhaps the footage we saw where we're running through the play area is actually Vanny attempting to chase Gregory through that area. Perhaps Vanny has to run as well from other animatronics who are programmed to go after anyone who is in the pizza plex after hours. After all, we still assume at this point I think that Vanny is a human, right? Maybe Vanny is the one that the name security breach actually refers to, and you are the one who's breaching it in an attempt to capture Gregory, all the while fighting to save him, fighting against yourself. So you're like, I'm gonna get him. But also stop. Don't do it. Number two, mind control. Why is Vanny even helping William? Why was she possibly described as being reluctant, the reluctant follower? It's more than likely that Glitch Trap somehow has taken hold of her mind and influenced her against her will. If the emails involving Ness and special delivery are Vanny, it would even appear that she's trying to fight back against this kind of influence. We see evidence of this through her search history mentioned there, with her looking at how to induce compliance in human subjects and then immediately searching just the single word 
Help. Ooh. Number one, cult of glitch trap. And if Vanny is being mind controlled, influenced, or otherwise forced to comply somehow with glitch trap's wishes, is it possible that others might also be feeling or experiencing the same thing, both within or even without Fazbear Entertainment? Some have speculated that this isn't just a single person becoming somehow susceptible. It could actually be a whole cult that may have even existed long before William Afton became glitch trap or even spring trap. The people who are part of the cult, like Vanny, seem to be worshipping. William or Glitchtrap somewhat. In Curse of Dreadbear, when we find and later interact with Vanny's mask, it seems as though she is communicating with Glitchtrap, or trying to at least, convincing him and herself that she is eager for what is coming and even trying to impress her master. Cult like behavior, which is what MatPat has theorized, may also imply that those who follow William can actually be saved by us, the player. Perhaps that will be our goal in Security Breach, not just to stop Vanny and Glitchtrap, but also to save Vanny as well. In a 10, Princess. Quest. This is a theory that I truly believe and that I'm pretty sure has been all but officially confirmed. Vanessa is certainly the princess that we play as in Princess Quest, since the game was used to lock her away in the first place, both in Help Wanted as well as in the first version of the game in Security Breach, which is just a recreation of the one that we play in the Help Wanted mobile port. To further solidify this connection, there are lore bags mentioning how Princess Quest is an arcade machine that for some reason was ported to that medium from mobile, and they couldn't figure out why. So this is clearly the game that we dealt with in Help Wanted, and since we play as Vanessa in Help Wanted, it only makes sense that Vanessa is once again the princess that we're playing as, who inevitably gets caught by Glitch Trap. And then we have to fight our way back into our body, as indicated by the sword we get in chapters 2 and 3. The biggest piece of evidence here is the final door. That is in essence a, an exact 16-bit replica of the door that we get shut behind in the true Help Wanted ending, which again, we do as Vanessa. So it's not Cassidy. Stop saying that. In at 9, relationship. Gregory, our player character in the game, is certainly a mysterious kid. And Vanessa, the night security guard who's also Vanny, is just as confusing. But at least we know more about her story, being our player from FNAF VR. But what the most mysterious thing about this game is, is the relationship between Gregory and Vanessa. Like what the heck is up with these two? Vanessa spends the whole game trying to lock Gregory in the security room, and then Vanny comes to kill us, as she does in the worst ending. But then, after curing her, we don't even ask questions, we just go eat ice cream on a hill with her. So if we're so quick to do that, then there's no way she's a stranger. It genuinely seems like their family, which would explain why he knew something was off with her, but she can't be his mother or sibling because when she locks us in the security office, she tells us that we'll wait until your parents or the police arrive. If it was a sibling, she would have said our parents or even mom and dad, but with her saying your parents, that means that they aren't hers, making our options limited. And she's definitely not our mom, since if she was, she would have said your father. Which is weird because she also seemingly does doesn't know Gregory's name until it starts coming out of his faz watch. Or at least that's how she says that she knows his name to Freddy in Parts and Service, but then she could have been lying. And it ain't aware. Now we may believe that Vanessa is unaware of her dual personality, that, that it would make sense if she blacks out while William takes over as Vanny, or however this weird pseudo possession thing works, I don't know, it's sentient code possessing a human. I, all normal bets are out the window. However, that is not the case at all. As we learn from CD number 11, it doesn't matter what order you find these endgame CDs in, you just need to find 11 of them and you are able to hear this. And we get our first indication that Vanessa is truly Vanny, at least first indication from the tapes. About halfway through this tape, the therapist says that's true. So on your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a con costume. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you going to make? Then Vanessa mutters indistinctly. You can't really make out what she says. And then the therapist replies with, what was that? Did you say the costume is a secret? Why is that? To which Vanessa replies, I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. He could be here or there or anywhere in between. That line of he said he would be watching surely means that she has some idea about what's going on. Especially when she's openly talking about how she has plans on making a costume, or at least mutters about it. So if she's aware but doesn't fight it, does that mean that she's accepted Afton as a part of her? Possibly. And it's seven connections. 
Now, whether or not she knew about this, Vanessa's recommendation for the night guard position came from the top of Fazbear Entertainment, which does end up confusing plenty of people in the administration, as we learned about from various duffel bags. She has no security experience, and she was transferred from another part of the company. But nevertheless, she still got the job despite multiple people saying that they wouldn't go forward with hiring her. Which honestly, let's be let's, let's be real here, probably led to their deaths. So who on earth is the one ordering her promotions? Seemingly, we have no idea. We could assume that it's William, but he's currently plugged into a charging station in the basement, so it would have to be someone who knew her, knew Afton's interest in her, made her a VR tester so that she could get possessed, and then made her a security guard so Afton could get her to do what he needed. But who could that possibly be? When I have a solid answer, I'll be sure I'll let you know. <laughs> And at 6, CRT effect. Now while most of the mystery surrounding the CRT effect we get on our screen when Vanny is around is directed at Gregory currently, like why does he see it like that, the bigger question in my opinion is why does Vanny cause that effect? We see it happen to the security cameras as well that the therapist describes to client 46, because she's only human, Vanny is only a person. There is no real reason for her to cause these sort of effects. Like yes she has some form of sentient code possessing her, somehow, but by no means should there be a reason why she is causing the cameras to screw up when she's near them, including Gregory's eyes. It explains why the animatronics can't see her, or why Freddy at least can't see her until he gets Roxy's eyes, but while the camera effect explains things, it still needs to be explained, because there is seemingly no way that it should actually be possible. Sentient code possessed or not, because either way, she's human. She bleeds when she falls down, or at least she should, but given that the game is designed for kids to be able to play it, um, there isn't really any blood, but still, she should only be human, right? How if you went to number 5, Client 46. Some people believe Gregory to be the mysterious Client 46, such as myself, able to be found in the retro CDs available at the end of the game, using Roxy's eyes. However, others suggest that perhaps this Client 46 is Vanny, since Vanny is an alternate persona of Vanessa, and Vanessa is her only other client with retro CDs in the game. Client 46 doesn't talk, but is adept at hacking, something we at least before the game came out associated with Vanny. However, I have a few issues with this theory. I don't know if therapists dealing with DID or dissociative identity disorder would classify other personalities as separate clients, since I'm pretty sure sentient code possessed humans wouldn't really be expected, even in the FNAF world, at least by the people in the FNAF world, so any therapist would most likely classify this as a case of DID. And I'm not sure if they classify other personalities as other clients, or if it's like the same client number but different notes. There's also the fact that Client 46 is seen talking to someone in a bunny costume, or at least the costume itself, however the cameras are glitching out indicating that the bunny is Vanny, and also the fact that Vanessa leaves in disc 12, or around disc 12 at least, and 46 doesn't end until disc 16. And at 4, Afton. In the best ending, there are quite a few confusing moments. The most confusing one for me at least is the idea that Gregory would go get ice cream with Vanessa once she's done trying to kill him, like why would you do that? Some seem to think that it's because they're related, or representing the dead Afton kids, and thanks to MapHat there's a little more evidence to this. The ice cream that Vanessa gets while on the hill is very reminiscent of the ice cream cone that gets Elizabeth lured into baby's arm grabbing or scooping range or however you want to say it. The cone with the tall soft serve on top kind of looks like the cone with the soft serve on top that baby presents to Elizabeth in order to lure her closer and then subsequently kill her. Is that evidence or just a coincidence? No idea whatsoever, but it's FNAF, so I'm going with it ain't a coincidence. Especially because Crying Child also has ice cream that could be symbolic. So that's a little too many coincidences, in my opinion. Getting close to the end in number three, Sacrifice. There's a theory that Gregory from this game is intended to be a robotic version of Crying Child, which in all honesty, makes sense. However, if this is the case, we can build off this, and maybe suggest that the real intention behind this game wasn't to bring William back in any capacity, but rather to make Gregory, his son, more like him by sacrificing Vanessa. Now, for some reason, everything seems to work out for Gregory, right? Despite going about this in what is probably the worst way possible, since staying in Freddy's room again would probably have been the winner's choice, Gregory doesn't end up dying this entire time, and in one ending he even stays so that he can kill Vanny and put an end to the missing children. However, honestly speaking, this just feels all kinds of wrong to me. 
Like, why did Vanny disassemble Freddy, but then leave the controller on the desk instead of taking it with her when she went to chase Gregory? And why even worry about chasing him yourself when you have f***ing robots that can grab him for you? This all seems like too many coincidences, especially for a FNAF game, which could be why this ending is required for the Princess Quest ending. Symbolic reasons. He can choose to be good or choose to be evil in this moment. And Afton was fine with sacrificing Vanessa. I'm pretty sure about that. But ultimately, in a number two, two Vannies. The rooftop ending is unlocked by exiting the pizza plex through the prize counter and then clicking leave. This will prompt Freddy to burn the place to the ground and the two of you can go escape onto the roof. I don't really know what Freddy's original plan was. I guess maybe you just go down the fire escape. But when Gregory gets to the roof, Fanny is seemingly there waiting for us. Somehow. She grabs us, but then Freddy, with his new eyes, sees Vanny and jumps off the roof with her, causing them both to fall. They both seemingly die, and we take off Vanny's mask, revealing Vanessa behind it. We look confused, and then the comic ends. However, before actually ending, another couple panels are shown, with Vanessa standing up on the rooftop looking down at what happened. This is probably one of the most confusing endings in the game, since it shows us that there are apparently two Vanessas. And while we seemingly knew about the whole double life thing, we hadn't really exactly seen these two characters in the same room, so we thought that they were one and the same. And in the Princess Quest ending, we seemingly save Vanny. The simplest answer to that is that there may not be two Vanessas, but could simply be Vanessa's soul looking down on her body. We know that souls are actually things in this universe thanks to FNAF 3's cutscenes where a purple guy gets spring trapped, and those souls had physical forms that caused him to freak out. So this could just be Vanessa regretting all the things that she did as Vanny, hence the fire because Remnant supposedly needs fire to burn. And finally, in a number one, Vanny's ending. In the canon ending to this game, the one where we fight against William Afton in the form of Burn Trap, in that ending, we don't really see what happens to Vanny. While yes, Burn Trap might have been dealt with, we don't know if this releases Vanny or if she's still under his control. Plus, we don't know just what she was actually doing when all this went down. When there's a canon ending to a game, you expect the main antagonist of the game to be there, right? So like, when Freddy and Gregory are just sitting on that hill, chilling in Cedar Rapids, what comes next for the series? This is a question I genuinely just don't have an answer to, and I don't think I could have one, because there are so many possibilities now that I think it's practically impossible for me to guess. And I think that's the point. Since there's someone taking over from Scott for the next game, I'm sure that Scott wanted to leave them with the ability to go wherever they wanted to next, whether that be with William as the main villain, hence his physical form, god I hope not, Vanny being the villain, hence her not being there in the end, or just the blob, since, you know, it was introduced and then intended to be revealed in the Final Passport Friends book, but then delays made the whole thing inevitable. Yeah, okay, you, you get it, alright? <laughs> That's my guess as to why the ending is so obscure, but still, what happened to Van? No clue.